morning, everyone. Welcome to day three, final day here at ATS Virtual. Um, today, we're going to conclude the seminar series with a couple uh, very intriguing um, uh, panels. So the first of which today is going to be interviewers, uh, an, inter an interview with two producers of Cashmere and Wool uh, from Mongolia. And we have the Mongolian ambassador here to uh, moderate and speak a little bit about the topic as well. So I'd like to introduce ambassador and our uh, panelists as well. Um, for the ambas uh, Embassy of Mongolia to Canada, we have Ambassador Ariam Bold Yadma um, joining us today as one of our guests. We have um, Badam Setseg Alan Sog. I think I said that right. Okay. Um, and she's the Director of Operations for the Mongolian Gallery. Um, next, we have Bat Ganbol. He is the executor, Executive Director for excuse me, executive director of S Eseg Kashmir. Eseg Kashmir, oh, yeah. Eseg Kashmir, yeah. So um, we'll go ahead and remind everybody that we do have a chat function um, as well as a Q&A. So if anybody has any questions during, we will address them at the very end. Also to our Facebook Live viewers, if you have any questions there uh, during any point in the panel, please include them there and I will read them off at the very end. Uh, without further ado, I'll be disappearing here for a minute and uh, but I'll be in the background. So Ambassador, the floor is yours. Welcome. Okay. Uh, I would say good morning in North America. Uh, good evening in Mongolia and Asia. Today I'm going uh, very proudly to be in front of you and uh, uh, to host the similar centers in Mongolian Kashmir industry, uh, Kashmir product producers and Kashmir products. Kashmir is most important uh, non-mining export of Mongolia, as you know. And uh, also Kashmir is known as uh, in the world, well known as one of the softest fiber. Uh, although we are supplying about 45% of uh, all the raw Kashmir's, uh, Mongolia is just producing uh, probably 10% out of them. And uh, we uh, supply to the global market with the trademark made in Mongolia. Recently, Mongolian Wool and Kashmir Association, I would like to really emphasize, emphasize on that uh, point that introduced Mongolian Novel Fiber Certification Trademark. Mm -hmm. And that certifies the product is made in 100% uh, with high quality wool and Kashmir, sustainably sourced from Mongolia. That meets Mongolian and international standards for textiles and woven products and fully complies with quality of standards and environmentally friendly manufacturing. Why I mention here about quality and sustainability is that uh, we traditionally uh, maintain the nomad, uh, especially I mean that among other farmers and herdsmen were just uh, having that nomad style of uh, uh, living in the rural areas uh, in a very cold climate. And uh, as you know, just that those uh, little animals, little cattle, uh, name it the goat, survive with the minus 40 and even colder weather. So uh, in the course of just our life, uh, we had the habit to use those Kashmir's to survive those winter. And the very interesting is just a few grams of those uh, Kashmir and also just of the cows that uh, camels that will uh, save their life entire winter. So I would say that quality is really ambassador and it's naturally made and uh, I sometimes uh, love to say that it's a given by God made by goat and uh, produced uh, by our intelligent new youth. And so, uh, and to prove that quality is just uh, it's, uh, hard work that Mongolian Wool and uh, Kashmir Association hardly worked out with international communities to prove the quality of that product. So uh, in Mongolia, the Kashmir sector supported nearly 10,000 employees uh, according to 2020 studies, which 90% uh, were women. That is in uh, my, I would say, the, my third point really would like to emphasize. And that 52% of total registered entities, uh, companies are women-led entrepreneurs, women-led enterprises. So it reflects the policy of the government pays particular attention to give women and more equitable access to the business. In here, just I also find the similarities with the policy of Canada, the similarities. 
So uh, I would uh, pause on that, uh, and I would like to introduce today our guest, Mr. Pat Gambold, CEO of Kashmir Holding, one of the oldest, I would say, Kashmir producer. Kashmir Holding established in the mid of uh, 1980s in Mongolia, and uh, as a first processor and the hero of the raw Kashmir. And uh, from the early beginnings, the company has uh, became the, one of the leading manufacturer of Kashmir holding and accessories. So next guest is, uh, you see the beautiful ladies, and it's Adam Chitik Altansoft. Uh, she is, as mentioned before, director of the operation uh, of Mongolian Gallery and uh, retail store dedicated to promoting Mongolian micro and small entrepreneurs uh, introducing Mongolian brands to the global consumers. Uh, I'm very proud that uh, she is graduate of Canadian universities and uh, working on, on that uh, industry. So uh, let me uh, start uh, uh, from Mr. Gamble. Uh, Kashmir Holding is uh, mm -hmm. uh, invented, uh, I would say, a uh, very nice uh, brand, AFSIC, uh, which is very famous in not only in Mongolia, beyond our boundaries. So tell us more about the Mongolian Kashmir production and how do you uh, how do you find the way that you know just uh, Kashmir will be the one of the uh, mainstream of the export and uh, how what do you say about the uh, Kashmir raw materials and Kashmir products interlinks and one what is your unique nature especially that I would say advantage is just to, to compete in the world market. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you for having me. It's a great honor to be attending the second time in uh, the World Apparel Expo in Canada. Uh, the first time we met on uh, uh, two years ago before the COVID. Um, it's, the, we are happy that uh, and it's also honored to be attending the second time of this show. I mean, the Apparel Expo. Uh, let me introduce the, our industry and uh, our company as well. Uh, the Mongolia is uh, the 15th largest land-based country in the world, and but we only roughly 3 million population and 40 million Byford. Uh, and we are <laughs> the grazing uh, 27 million goats in Mongolia. The Mongolian, the hard <laughs> climate, reaching from minus 40 to negative 40 Celsius during the winter. In this harsh climate, the goats, in order to survive, they produce fine quality uh, fleece from themselves to, to keep themselves warm. So when the spring came, they shade their unwanted hair. And so the herders come and collect the raw material, which is cashmere, and <clears throat> sell it to the domestic companies and also export roughly uh, supplying the 45% of the, the world raw cashmere to various countries, mainly to China. And uh, the, the, the first, um, the biggest supplier is China. So the reason why the China is the biggest supplier in, in Walmart, I mean, the cashmere market is because of the inner Mongolia, which is similar to ethnically Mongolians. And they're also producing the Chinese raw cashmere and supply it to the worldwide. So <clears throat> the Mongolia produces roughly uh, almost 10,000 tons of raw cashmere annually and exporting uh, various countries, mainly to Europe uh, because of the, the European uh, high demand in um, fine quality of cashmere. Uh, because of the dur long duration of winter, the animals produce long hair. So the long hair means it's better yarn. So better yarns mean the quality products in, in the end product. Uh, and our company founded in during the Soviet era by the aid of the Russian government and to produce the process, the raw material and export it to mainly the Soviet countries. But in 1990, the Mongolia became democratic and the free market society. So the, our employees decided to buy the company itself and then it's employee owned. I'm the third generation of the, the <clears throat> third generation who is working in the family business. So it's, we call the, 
a family business because it's employee owned and uh, various owners are the employees. So as ambassadors stated that uh, our industry employs 90% of the labor is a female workforce. So we are very proud of it. And also we address um, the woman, um, the social issues such as daycare and maternity leave and, and many other aspects of uh, surrounding uh, lady workers. So in that regard, it's our industries very significantly important in, in the Mongolian labor force. So also the Mongolia is, as ambassador stated again, um, that the half of the population is nomadic. So every nomadic family pretty much owns the goats and herds. And that's the main staple income from the, the from Kashmir industry. So we are very proud to say that uh, everything we produce and export, bringing the cash to not just the Mongolian economy, also the, the herders and sustain the uh, lifestyle of many, the nomadic lifestyle. So we are proud that um, to work among the herders and supporting the nomadic lifestyle. And uh, our brand is Yusik. Uh, it's the second biggest producer in Mongolia. And we roughly employ uh, 1500 employees, uh, mainly women. And currently we have daycare and anything is on our premises to, to um, support um, the workforce. And because of we are one of the oldest manufacturing in Mongolia, we also have various different programs that support export and also the sustainability aspect of the Kashmir industry as well. So if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm honored to be in the panel discussion and uh, I hope give you good, represent the good, uh, our industry as well, so. Thank you, Ambassador. Okay, uh, thank you, Gambo. And uh, mm -hmm. the very interesting point you touched upon is that just how did you get this uh, manufacturing, I would say, to the industry. Really in 1990s, just, uh, we opened up all the economy and uh, we implemented the policy, half, uh, I would say just uh, after the constitution, mm -hmm. how to develop the free market economy. And it was very hard that there was no longer existing such a, I would say, just a state-owned company is running well. So it was uh, economically a very hard time. Then uh, the privatization was going on uh, throughout the country. And mm -hmm. at the time, just uh, you, through the privatization process, uh, your uh, other that, uh, partners uh, probably the, uh, uh, bought the company. But the time, just you mentioned, it was just a very old technology. But today, just uh, you are working uh, to export all the products. Uh, probably there was a, a lot of innovations. And what technology you want to use from where? And yeah. how do you uh, achieve the qualities? And how competitive you are now? Yeah, in, your yes, in, in wool industry, uh, wool textile industry, there's a two main players in terms of automatic kneading process. Uh, one is Shimasaki from Japan, uh, one is Stolt from Germany, and 90% um, of our uh, machinery is made, uh, these two companies, uh, Stolt and Shimasaki. So uh, we are, believe it or not, because of Mongolian labor force is very scarce, uh, we are heavily investing into um, latest technology from Japan and, and Germany, and we producing whole garments. And we, for example, in, in Scotland and in England, uh, there's still they using the old way of doing the need wares. But in Mongolia, majority of our um, machineries are the, the oldest one is seven years old. <laughs> so it's very trendy machines that produce uh, whole garments and needed seamless uh, designs. And so in terms of design, we are very good with that. And then the 70% what we produce in the premises is exported to mainly to European market, mainly to uh, UK and Scotland, and also in Germany and France. And so uh, North America is different culture. And 
the Kashmir is recent trend that it's coming up. So we are hoping to, to in, in order to participate in the Imperial Expo to attend and to capture that market. So, yeah. Yeah, and uh, first you very rightly mentioned about the uh, interlinks mm -hmm. between the producers and also just the merchant mm -hmm. capitalizers in the provincial area. That's true that mm -hmm. every export is supporting not only that the uh, entire economy and mastery, but also just mm -hmm. supporting uh, style of living, traditional mm -hmm. living of herdsmen uh, in uh, nomad uh, wild pasture. Mm -hmm. So thank you. And uh, that's I'm really pleased to hear that you had Develop mm -hmm. that uh, latest technologies and uh, plant those uh, technologies in Mongolia. So there should be no doubt that using the high quality product uh, needs to be processed with high technologies. So mm -hmm. then it should be uh, reliable. And, but of course, it's the fashion and all those things will be just another, another issue. So, of course, just, uh, we, if we touch upon some entire uh, agriculture and our the industry, so there will be just a huge discussion. And, uh, so, just we really try to do focus on Kashmir and the whole industry. But sourcing mm -hmm. of those uh, products uh, from the such a huge area, like in a province, if you travel from one point to another, is probably sometimes reaching about 2,000 kilometers. That requires maybe heavy logistics uh, in your yes. company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, the for the what sourcing. Is your what is your management, and what is how do you just select, and is there any uh, quality verification at this point, mm -hmm. or just you select them just once, just all the you collect them at your factory? Uh, in order, to, <clears throat> the raw material collection part is mainly dictated by the weather. Uh, when the spring comes, when the the snow smart start melting, we rush with that basically race with that uh the natural event uh the the because of when the spring came and the snow start melting the hair it's uh mixed with a lot of dirt so we have to collect it before the the spring start snow melting part so uh of course mongolia is a very <laughs> big country it's a 50 times as a taxes so um but the sourcing part is uh mongolian there's a over the throughout the years there's a the supply chain is developed um used to be a mainly a middleman but nowadays because of technology and the government help uh, we can basically directly to go to herders and buy individually so we have very um, the extended um, the record of data that says which part of the country, which herder have good um, producing Kashmir. So um, I think the Mr. Ambassador will introduce the, the government uh, program that's called no a Noble Fiber. Uh, so Noble Fiber is a program that's um, really emphasis on sustainability and traceability. So the traceability part is if we buy a ton or or you know 500 kilogram of raw cashmere from one herder we basically tag that um, raw material and we can see the how it's how much it's yielding throughout the process so if any product that's are finished in our facilities we can trace it back which family produced this raw material so this is not just our company it's a whole it's a government program that's emphasis on sustainability and traceability so because of this program that introduced in two years ago we have the one of the this the first few that received this traceability noble certificate um with that uh, we can basically trace every garment that's whoever the produced that raw materials, which part of the Mongolia and which family produced them. So the, because of this, the, the herders paid well. And, and also we can see um, the cost structure, the supply chain cost structure as well. So um, we are very happy that with this government program, I think Mr. Ambassador will also discuss about later on. So, yeah. 
Yeah, um, that's just it. Trying to really the first part. I I, I plan to talk about the sourcing and production, and just later on, just that we move with the lady about just how we have marketing and um, you know, what's going on with this uh, our uh, marketing and exporting the North America mm -hmm. in the region. So, so that's uh, very interesting. You know, just uh, being as a uh, you know just a lot of I'm uh, reading a lot of materials about Kashmir mm -hmm. industry and uh, having met with, with a lot of people, but. Still, I would like to, to bring the knowledge and those information that just you mentioned to the public that uh, maybe just watching us at that moment. And uh, uh, I try just to really to see and make sure that that products are really natural just uh, from the goods. And uh, sometimes just I feel this very uh, environmentally friendly and natural product producing uh, technology that some uh, Kashmir product and wool product has a light white or maybe light brown color. They even just say there is no chemical, no uh, paint that you know yes. just uh, so no nobody dying that you know just with the yep. color. So if I just it's uh, just that, that there should not be any chance that the uh, allergy or any effect that there is no chemical. I, I never seen that product that naturally comes from the uh, I would say the skin of the little animal and goes to become the any product, final product uh, for the consumers. So that's just the one of uh, very unique nature I see in uh, Kashmir and wool production. And secondly, mm -hmm. that's very natural that, you know, just the, uh, the current policy is very, I think, uh, relevant to assure the quality and uh, the source and the, uh, those products. and. Specialists that you mentioned that you have the some records of mm -hmm. treating the products and the uh, originally just the way did you collect it. So that's very important also just for the government to see the economic, economic data will give us just to make more uh, precise policy to support the industry. Also, on the other hand, of course, uh, we would definitely improve the uh, uh, insurance that product will be high quality and that goes through the certification. Of course, uh, there is a little bit of the procedures to start with certification, but that is just uh, one of the layers that is uh, required uh, to be, you know, just a normally for entire process uh, or be sure with the with quality. Okay, and uh, also just uh, you mentioned about the latest technologies uh, you guys mm -hmm. are using uh, in your uh, factory that is. Uh, really point that I intended to do to the uh, public and audience today. Mm -hmm. so, uh, of course, uh, uh, still just, uh, you are just one of the success story of Mongolia in the Kashmir industry and the uh, government is really willing to, to increase the production of Kashmir producers and also just how uh, we would like to start to processing of the Kashmir and uh, put uh, can put the goal that uh, increased this uh, at least the Kashmir processing up to 60 percent mm -hmm. and the problem was just now this we have maybe at the 10 percent so means that just uh, we will uh, multiply it six times that is enormous work and enormous mm -hmm. collaboration and we should have just a very strong vision and political will is there, and uh, it is uh, stipulated in the current action plan from 2020-2024 that special Kashmir program is uh, one of the current priority to diversify our economy, especially mm -hmm. just to increase this export product. So that is uh, what is your confidence from the industry? Just uh, just you mentioned that you know just the problem was a good that you know just supporting. The industry to collect the raw materials and given the time that just you need to prepare all those you know when the snow melts and but you still just a trade and process throughout the year so just uh, what you see uh, the perspectives of the government policy and uh, what was it working uh, is it working in uh, in your case so i would like to, to hear about it yeah um last four years or so uh, we are working very closely with the government. Um, the reason is uh, because there's a, used to be a Mongolian, the Kashmir industry was chasing just numbers. I mean, the, the quantity of it. So as long as we export thing was fine, but nowadays because of the, the climate change and sustainability aspects, not just Mongolia, the first buyers are demanding that sustainability and traceability 
And used to be we were just basically selling the huge amount of raw cashmere to China and then the Chinese buying it and then producing the whole garment and exporting to Europe. But nowadays the European buyers know this and the, some of the big brands are interested into Mongolia and buying directly from Mongolia because it promotes traceability aspect and sustainability. So the cutting the middleman is always win-win for the end users and the producers from the herders as well. So uh, because of that, the Mongolian half of the, the voters are nomadic. So the government have to give very emphasis on, on, on the herds main income of source, which is raw cashmere. So because of national and international sustainable programs that's promoting the traceability and sustainability, we are as a, with the country, with the government and industry, really shifting onto um, the quantity versus quality. So we all want to focus on the quality. Because of that, uh, recently, the main big European high-end brands are sourcing it directly from Mongolia. Um, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, and big name brands are sourcing their raw material directly from Mongolia because of the government program that it's, as again, I mentioned earlier, the noble <laughs> fiber, which is the government agencies guaranteeing to buyers that it's sustainable and direct um, traceable. So there is a win-win all parts, not just the producers um, are, are, or the middleman is winning. No, it's nowadays you're just the end users buying cheaply directly from Mongolian source. And they are, because of um, the big brands, um, um, social, <laughs> the advocacy programs, we have to use a certain amount of dye that's are acceptable in the European market. So, so basically the market dictates what we do. So in order to resell into European market, the European regulation is very high. So in order to, to reach that uh, high um, uh, spec, right? Specification, we have to, have to be using the European dye and European um, technology and the latest stuff. So those are very efficient in terms of um, electric use and sustainability and traceability. So that plays a huge role. So the government is also is also helping. We don't want to be just mining com um, nation, you know. We also want to export because of our traditional nomadic background. We want to produce um, the agriculture products, mainly from leather, wool, cashmere, and meat as well. So that sense is, um, I think the government programs are working because is the government programs also working closely with the international programs as well. Uh, Asian Development Bank, European Development Bank, and American Millennium Foundation programs. Those things are helping the Mongolia to be the very competitive in the global market. So that sense, I think it's have to work and also it's working as well. So from, from my perspective, because it's our, um, the many years ago is, it's just by ourselves doing everything, but now it's the government is also playing huge role in, in our uh, compatibility and in the global market. So, yeah. Thank you. And uh, I think, uh, you know, government role is very regulatory mm -hmm. and uh, very happy to hear that that drill is performing well mm -hmm. and reaching out, and especially uh, it, if it supports to encourage entire industry to uh, increase their production and mm -hmm. uh, efficiency, and especially just if you have opportunities to be developed at the you know, industry and also the facilities, that's a very good. And the government is really intent to have a very sustainable policy and act very practically, efficient. Efficiency is one of the priority and the result-oriented practical approaches all comes 
such a result and um, progress. And mm -hmm. at the end, that is one of the uh, another uh, of kind of collaboration between private and public cooperation. Yeah. So, uh, and it's uh, good uh, to hear that uh, some uh, reputable brands from worldwide is coming to Mongolia to source the raw materials. So already we have their trust and uh, we are in their radar. So it's mm -hmm. thanks to our private entrepreneurs, uh, mm -hmm. thanks to their hard work and strategies. So uh, now I would like to maybe just a uh, very uh, last uh, question related to the producers. The worldwide issue is the pandemic and restrictions mm -hmm. and healthcare, precarious mm -hmm. measures. So how does it affect uh, current your production and sourcing? And also what is your uh, perspectives in post-pandemic era, how it was hurt? Yeah, yeah it's pandemic is, uh, at the beginning it was is hard, but um, it's a very interesting effect on in terms of production and also the sales as well. Uh, due to the pandemic, of course, there's uh, uh, many are, um, foreign buyers are due to the lockdowns they are not in operation they're not you selling as much as used to be but because of the pandemic the online platform or e-commerce are booming and everybody wants to shop from their home and they have a time to resource and research on the sourcing of the products so the mongolian cashmere are very in high demand in e-commerce platforms uh, because people wants to buy it directly from the producers directly from sourcing it from the the companies believe it or not our industry is actually thriving in e-commerce platform uh, in online shopping basically the traditional shoppings are no longer you know the every sale clerk can't answer where is mongolia why the mongolian cashmere is best they can't answer that but the, with the help of e-commerce we can answer and educate and marketing our our industry as a, as a as a country and as a industry and because of that many people are directly contacting from abroad and asking to buy from mongolian cashmere and they researched it with the help of um, basically internet, right? So we are very um, investing on, on e-commerce and live commerce. And again, and Mr. Ambassador is sitting in, in Canada. I'm here in Mongolia in the evening in my living room. And we are just discussing about the, this, this event, right? So with this help of technology, I think it's we seeing big opportunity in terms of sales and in terms of marketing and educating the customers, what is Mongolian cashmere, why it's the best cashmere in the in the world, so and why it's it's ethically sourced and and, and, and sustainably, um, and it's good for the environment as well. So yeah, so the yeah, pandemic has two sides. So yeah, uh, of course, just the pandemic has bad and good side and uh, two sides also the combined yeah. is a result and the reality of today mm -hmm. what we are seeing. Yeah. So uh, at that point about uh, e-commerce, so, or just uh, your uh, intention to sell a product through that uh, e-commerce platform, probably I will move for the, our next panelist. But uh, mm -hmm. I, I would like to mention that the earlier time is that when I was searching on a Google, what is a Mangala cashmere, millions of results comes up and all that say some videos that what is a cashmere probably. If I search now, just I will find the few links that Somebody is trading with cashmere, like in other yeah. shops. So that that I would love to see. <laughs> Thank you. So, Thank you. The of, uh, you know, just uh, I have been told you opened the mm -hmm. store in the West of World Trade Center, mm -hmm. and also uh, the outings of uh, you, your company set up the online shop to promote Mongolian uh, cashmere to marketing, especially just the. For the first time, I think uh, you are one of the company of marketing and selling the uh, Mongolian cashmere product in North America. And uh, also, I'm proud to say that uh, 
Mongolia is a small and medium industry uh, coming to the North American market and acting so uh, working so actively. So, would you please a little uh, describe about your business, your strategy, and uh, especially I would like to hear your success stories. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ambassador, uh, for your kind words and welcome everyone. Um, I would like to give a little bit of presentation about our company and our founder company as well. Let me just share my screen so you guys can see. Okay. So Mongolian Gallery um, the store that was initiated by Export and International Trade Center. It's a consulting company, not for profit consulting company in Mongolia. Their mission is to support and assist our national producers, increase the value added exports, as well as increase the export diversification of brands and assist with the export, uh, increasing the export contribution to Mongolian economic growth. So we work to provide comprehensive export network and opportunities for micro and small medium businesses, as Mr. Um, Ambassador said. And um, we're mostly focusing on cashmere, wool, and leather industry. And we also work to affiliate the relationship between private businesses and public uh, uh, government agencies. In doing so, we organize uh, trade shows, uh, virtual trade shows, and actually physical trade shows. Due to pandemic, we hosted one of our most recent trade show, Mongolia Japan uh, uh, show. It was for the fifth anniversary of economic partnership agreement virtually. So it was on the exportmongolia.org platform that we hosted about 100 companies representing their products, their company showcasing what their potential is to uh, Japanese networks and connections. Um, and our next event is in uh, United States in Washington DC in November. We are showcasing also all for Mongolian um, brands, our wool cashmere brands as well as leather and accessories as well. Uh, that one would be hybrid, which would be the first time that we're hosting a hybrid event. It is going to be on virtual and physical. It's going to be at the Washington DC World Trade Center. So we work closely with private businesses, mostly small mid medium businesses and female owned businesses, as well as government agencies as they support all of our events and uh, you know, uh, assist with uh, getting networks, getting the word out um, and uh, like that. So we just opened the Mongolian gallery showroom. This uh, one is to also assist our uh, small medium businesses. So we were um, starting from logistics and we developed the trade shows, uh, getting the word out about Mongolian brands, Mongolian companies. Unfortunately, because we didn't have much experience, our small medium businesses don't have much experience ex exporting internationally, they didn't know what standards to uh, comply to, or what design works best in what market. So we decided to open a store. Uh, we opened it last year, Mongolian Gallery Showroom at the World Trade Center in New York City. The building you see on the picture is Oculus. Um, Mm -hmm. and it's right beside the 9-11 memorial so this is the most visited site in new york city um and uh, we just expanded into some uh a larger space so we're currently hosting about 12 different brands uh four from cashmere two from leather handbags one leather shoes and handmade cosmetics handmade jewelry as well as accessories that are all made in mongolia so mm -hmm. Like we're proud to be representing Mongolia in World Trade Center as well as in New York City. Um, and also show, we're proud to be assisting our small businesses and female owned businesses and showcasing their potential and commercial potential as well as our culture in New York City. So uh, we also uh, understand, as Mr. Butt said, that the world of retail is for, uh, moving further from just being physical. E-commerce is such a big, um, part of uh, business operation nowadays. So we created mongoliangallery.com and a uh, platform on Etsy, Amazon, and eBay. So mm -hmm. these are also like a lot of like, it has a lot of financial implications and financial resources for brands to build. So us having one single uh, space, one single website, it will be assisting all of our small businesses to cut out that expense and just partner with us, provide their uh, product to us, and then we'll all display it on this one singular platform. So anyone can visit um, our website and then purchase all Made in Mongolia products, not only one brand, but 12 different brands. 
So a little bit about export opportunities of Mongolia. So as Mr. Butt said, we we represent about 45% uh, of Mongolia uh, world's cashmere uh, supply. And even though we like export about 10,000 10, tons, it's not all like, you know, finished products. It's only 10% is finished product. And we're hoping to change that to increase the value added exports of uh, cashmere. So these are some um, images of the finished goods. As you can see, they're annually, I think Mongolia represent about uh, actually produce about 2.8 million cashmere wool products and only um, that only represents a 10% of what we export internationally. So currently we're representing national cashmere, sealant cashmere, glamour cashmere, so let's say cashmere, all of them have a different uh, uniqueness to it and as well as the design uniqueness to it. Um, as far as our, as as for um, hide and letter, there's about 202 factories that uh, manufacture and uh, process letter, and about 200, uh, about out of, out of the 202, 35 is processing, and 180 are uh, produces final products. So the brands that we represent at the moment are Mary's, Mongol It's a, also a true letter company in Mongolia that focuses on letter goods and accessories, handbags, travel bags, as well as hassads. Hassad is one of the longest running uh, leather shoe manufacturers since the since uh, since 1990s, I believe, and they have been uh, making a lot of kids leather shoes, working with Italian designers, Italian um, accessories, and all of the hardware's come from Italy, so it ensures quality. And they just want uh, associated with the C3 certificate, um, which qualifies for the safety boots and they supply the safety boots to Ayutthala, the biggest mining um, in Mongolia. It's also owned by Rio Tinto, I believe. It's an Australian company. Um, so with EITC, um, we're with the brand associations uh, with EITC and Mongolian gallery, we're hoping to uh, increase our brand recognition worldwide. So we don't sell the products as Mongolian gallery, we sell it as, you know, however branded it is, still in cashmere, so flat cashmere. So they get the acknowledgement that they deserve. We are the third man just representing all the brands in North America and assisting our small businesses to find, uh, to find suppliers, like actually buyers and uh, big buyers, as well as like just showcasing the commercial side of it to worldwide customers because World Trade Center is the most visited, as I said, and it is a tourist spot. So every uh, people from everywhere around the world like comes mm -hmm. and checks out our products and also notes the uniqueness and the quality of all of our cashmere as well as the small accessories as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Altensek, for your very excellent introduction. And I'm really proud of your game. Not only from the perspective that you graduated from the Canadian University where, where we are sitting, also just uh, or what is the very young girl having such a vision and uh, that success is really, uh, you know, just a visual view that is a result of the hard work. <clears throat> Uh, and uh, after the production, I would say that the trading and the trade is a very uh, unique aspect. And uh, in 1997, Mongolia became the WTO member. So intention of that government or policy was that, you know, to develop the trade and uh, to be connected with the world. And uh, trade always create the wealth and cooperation. So that I see the now, only now, I see just a very young trader and especially just marketing Mongolian product. And, North America, it's a very competitive region and uh, still just uh, you're working well. Uh, thank you. Uh, in the other hand, uh, that uh, handmade product, especially that uh, cashmere product is really comfortable for every consumers, every customers. Uh, even uh, because of the climate here in North America, especially in Canada region, is, uh, it's the same as Mongolia. So I sometimes really feel when I woke up in the morning with snowy climate and so just I feel that I'm at home in Mongolia. So therefore that uh, climate uh, and uh, that very affordable price for such a high-end product produced in Mongolia, if uh, it's delivered to the North America, it will be one of the kind of the caring the pupil 
of the health, especially in the area of the pandemic, in the area of those population uh, related uh, concern about the immunities. So it's a very universal, technically, oh, sorry, I received a uh, message, but it, it was not a question to our seminar. So uh, I really uh, would like just to mention about your November event, and uh, we, we are working uh, on to extending it to the Canada following the event. Since just they arrived in North America, to combine these two countries would be economically very reasonable and easy. So, but uh, let us see just what will be the, the border restrictions by that time, just if there's a quarantine of the two weeks. So it will be hot uh, waiting for two weeks in some hotel for the next event. It will be very costly. So let us just uh, look at this uh, very positively and hope that because of vaccinations, definitely the situation will be easier. So now we just uh, cover just uh, from the sourcing, so the production and high technology, and uh, also just how we are marketing and trading in North America, especially just in the heart of the uh, United States, it's, uh, uh, New York is a very special place. So I have just a common question to both of you, just uh, 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 what you see in the future of the Kashmir industry uh, in relation to your uh, producing and the marketing in the special North America and also in general. And I would very appreciate if you can would also focus on uh, the company strategy to marketing to Canada as well. So I would like to, to hear your voices. It can be your ambitions, you know, just ambition. So I, I would not be quiet any time. Uh, so that uh, you should you should keep your words. <laughs> but what is your vision? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I actually, as Mr. Ambassador said, I graduated in Toronto. So I've had um, privilege to meet people from different world, uh, different parts of the world. And when I say Mongolia, they wouldn't really highlight Kashmir, but it seems like nowadays, like now I'm in New York City, like meeting people, they know the Kashmir's quality. Um, the Kashmir is the softest, the warmest, and it's a really high quality while being affordable. So in, in the future in North America, I believe Kashmir, Mongolian Kashmir will be more known and the brands will be more recognized. Um, and with our, uh, the steps that we're taking and miss, um, if the Kashmir is taking, it will be like known worldwide. That's what I believe in. And for our perspective, our vision is to expand Mongolian Gallery to Canada because as Mr. Ambassador said, the weather weather uh, is really similar to Mongolia. It's cold. <laughs> It's very cold in the e um, in the evening and in, in the winter, so it would be in, um, that's our uh, business strategy in the next five years to expand uh, to Canada and also increase our marketing and partnerships with different cashmere brands uh, uh, to up to twenty cashmere brands from Mongolia. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, I would like to also add one thing. Um, as again, uh, in New York, there. In North America, through the big store um, like Macy's and different uh, JP, <laughs> I forgot um, the many brands actually that produces sells the the cashmere products. Actually, majority of them actually sourced from Mongolia, and uh, because of the private label disclosure agreement, uh, many of them just says you know Macy's or or different brand names that's on. But reality is the maybe 90 or 80 percent of them is likely to come from mongolia so only recently that the mongolian brands trying to sell to directly to the consumers not through private label or uh, uh different through the different brand so as again and then if you are wearing a north america cashmere products as you buy from north america it's likely to produce in mongolia or it's at least it's sourced directly from our goal. So, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I would be very happy to hear that the young voices and uh, 
In fact, you know, so I can post it here about three years ago, and the very first meeting in Mongolia before my departure was uh, held in uh, my foreign ministry office. It was uh, Mongolian uh, wool and Kashmir industry representatives. So why I mentioned this is that you know, it really takes time. Uh, even just, just today's meeting happened only three years after. But gradually, just, uh, you know, just uh, we are progressing. And uh, therefore, just, I'm very confident that uh, the, from the sourcing through the production with high technologies and uh, through that young initiatives, especially from the small and medium industry, uh, based on the uh, electronic uh, e-commerce platforms, also just uh, using the connections and uh, uh, if possible ability just uh, to have to open that uh, stores and shops uh, in North America. That is just you know, great that you know, just you're starting. But that would be really cost effective. Of course, just the marketing requires more additional hard work and more expense, but you could you know, just uh, already connect Two ends, you know, so from the sourcing to the end users. So I would like just uh, wish uh, all the success, and uh, I'll be always happy to work with you in terms of just, you know, just uh, providing the policy support and uh, consulting with the present uh, respected governments, government authorities, and uh, my jurisdiction is Canada. So therefore, just anything related uh, to Canada, please do not hesitate to contact me and i'm still just looking maybe i'm not good at all. There is the q and a button and chat button raise hand button, but none of them is active enough so uh, i think there is therefore i have no question probably is that you explained everything very clearly am i right jason that's generally what that means yes <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, let me see if we have any questions from our facebook viewers doesn't appear to be so. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, for this for this uh, eye opening. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that explanation. It's uh, I had no idea there were actually that many sheep in uh, in Mongolia. Like, what, what was the figure again? How many million? Uh, twenty-seven million. Twenty-seven million. My God. <laughs> we are only three three million population, so it's uh, um, I, maybe no, almost ten times, <laughs> nine times, but many That's incredible. Is the Yep. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Um, well, I'd like to remind everybody um, that we, we, we do have our show, um, uh, trade show, excuse me, um, mm -hmm. landing page, which is essentially taking the place of our show floor. So everybody mm -hmm. watching, I encourage everybody after this to go ahead and check that out. Uh, let me go ahead and paste the link here in the chat in mm -hmm. case anybody has navigated away from that. And in there, you'll find our uh, show office, which uh, is mm -hmm. a great place to match make with other attendees. Uh, it's also a live hangout to network. Our speakers will be in and out of there as well all day long. Um, connect with suppliers. Also, feel free to check out our three um, rooms. We have our first room featuring suppliers from Mongolia, um, Bangladesh, Brazil, Portugal, Canada, United States. That's in room one. Room two, we have our suppliers from India. And room three, we have our suppliers from China. So I encourage everybody to go take a look in there and see what they can find. Um, also, if anybody would like to rewatch this mm -hmm. panel, um, I just posted a link to our ATS YouTube channel. I highly encourage everyone to subscribe. And when these videos become available in about a week after the show's conclusion, we will, you will get a notification. So again, thank you, the three of you, Ambassador. Um, it, was, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Okay. Have a good evening. Have Thanks. a good day. <laughs> I'm going, Gellar. Uh, yeah, and uh, right. I wish uh, all the best and success to this exhibition today. And mm -hmm. also just uh, we have uh, two participants and uh, I would like to invite everybody to come to our showrooms. Yeah. Okay, right. have a good day. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good good night. Evening.